<laughs> Hello guys and girls and welcome to another episode of Antlers. That's right, another episode of Antlers. And uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different this week as opposed to just jumping in there and start looking at the deer. Uh, I do have I do have my bag of Grimway Farms baby carrots right here. So we got some we got some carrots to feed uh, Split Ear and everybody else. But I thought we might take a little quick spin around the ranch. It's been a while since we ran around the ranch and uh, thought we might take a little quick spin and show you what we've been doing around here. We've been doing a little bit of burning. I'll show you what that looks like. Some of it has already got some green coming up in it, but a lot of it does not. But, uh, but I thought you might just enjoy, uh, and, you know, burned grass is not really exciting at all. But you just might see what we do down here because it seems like that uh, every time we have guests down, they talk about, boy, y'all look like you had a bad fire. And we really haven't had a bad fire. Uh, it's called a controlled burn. Now, all controlled burns don't go the same. They're not all created equal. Uh, equal. Some controlled burns require some control burns require a tremendous amount of, uh, well, we got to call the fire department. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> you know, as I talk about that, I look up here. Apache's done most of the control burning by himself. I've helped a little bit. But as I talk about that, he's actually now got a control burn going in the deer pens, actually in the pens. Now, one of the advantages of doing the control burns in the deer pen is that Look at there, well, we got the back pin shut off and we're doing the control burning inside the deer pen there. One of the advantages of doing this is that it creates fertilizer and it makes things grow a little bit better. Apache, yes, are we having roast deer? No. Roast deer meat? No, no. Huh? No, <laughs> you just, the wind blowing this way, they don't mind that a bit, do they? No, no. They're just, uh, they're just, uh, uh, they're just kind of, they're, they're kind of just, the, the, the smoke or nothing bothers them, does it? No, no. Yeah. It's not wanting to burn much. Oh, you're burning mostly that uh, uh, bad hay up yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, more... yeah, yeah. You gonna plant some seed in there? Yes, sir. Sounds good. Well, I'm gonna take a quick little spin around. I'm trying to get a little video work done. Now I got, I got some carrots here. That Grimway Farms Apache? I mentioned, uh, talked about feeding all them carrots. They sent me an email and they're going to send me some coupons for discounts or free carrots or something. That's good. That's good, isn't it? You've been buying them too, hadn't you? Yeah. Feeding. Yeah. They like well, we'll get coupons, we'll get them free or get a discount off of them. Yeah. That'll be good, won't it? Yeah. All right. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and head on and run around. Get you some marshmallows and wieners, you can have your wiener roast. <laughs> you can see we got a pretty good brush pile burning back there. He's kind of burning up some of that old alfalfa that they don't eat, getting that out of there. And we're gonna actually, we got all the deer in the back pens, and actually what he's gonna end up doing is uh, putting some seed in there and hopefully we get some rain on it. And we'll probably, we got, we can irrigate out of the lake a little bit on it, but the lake's so low. But uh, we're going to try to get some of this front pin to grow up a little bit with the green, when the green gets started good. You can see that he's burned this area right here, this area right below the pins, the lake down below. But you can see he's burned that. Now that grass right there will get up really, really high. Uh, and it wants to start turning green here pretty soon. The, the latter things that we've been burning has been down here. You can see, of course, how low the lake is. The water, water normally comes up in this creek right here, but it's way out over there, a long way off. Here's another little area that we burn. Again, uh, that's an area where the grass gets really, really high. That will turn real pretty and green. Doesn't look that good now. The little the lake comes all the way up here in this little bay right here. But uh, that's going to be a that's going to be another pretty little area there. that uh, we'll have some, have some real pretty green grass in it pretty soon. As we head up this hill here, you see that we actually burn in the woods. Now, a lot of people might think that all those big giant trees and all those cedars and everything would catch on fire, but you see that they don't. Uh, we, burn in, that's, we burn a lot of leaves and we burn a lot of, 
lot of sage grass and, and uh, grass that's on the bottom of that. It really doesn't hurt. You can see a, every now and then you'll see some dead trees that got caught on fire and burned up. Most of them will burn completely up and fall down. But uh, you can see as you look back through the woods, uh, pretty barren looking, but now that's going to turn real pretty in there. That grass will that get some, hopefully we'll get some more rain on it this weekend. We got three tenths out of this last bunch of rain. It was supposed to be so good, it didn't end up being that good. We ended up getting three tenths. Now, now I forecast this next rain, uh, Monday and Tuesday, next couple of days, 1.7 inches. We'll see if it happens. Again, you can see this mountain right here. Uh, we burned that mountain off. That, again, will be beautiful. I know you might be thinking, Jimmy, where's some of that green you was talking about? We'll see a little bit of green. Not a lot, not a lot, because uh, we haven't had the rain on it, and we've had all this cold weather coming in. Pretty chilly this morning, as a matter of fact. It's supposed to be at 70-something this afternoon. But you get up here to the shooting range. You get up here to the shooting range. Again, you can see that we have burned that off. That's just kind of black looking, not very pretty at all. I'll try to take a little run through here and show you what this looks like. We'll just drive down through the middle of the shooting range there, but uh, show you what this looks like, what this looks like, uh, um, you know, two or three weeks from now, because it'll be a major difference. And you'll see that, you'll see that the, you'll see that what the advantage of burning really is. It creates a lot of fertilizer and it creates a, a good situation gets rid of a lot of the underbrush a lot of the stuff burns up that we don't want laying on the ground i tell you something else i have not really got to do a lot of shed hunting this year but you can actually drive around like this and uh and find some sheds pretty easily now sometimes those sheds got a little fire burn on them depending on how much grass was around them but it's a, another way to actually locate a few sheds that you might not you might not find otherwise so that's that's not a that's not a bad bad deal at all from that that standpoint. But I'll drive just drive out through the, the the burned area here. You can see what it looks like all around as it's burned out. But we can walk around a lot of these burned areas. Walk around a lot of these burned areas. This area right here where we killed a couple of hogs. Those are hog skulls and bones laying there, that's what those are, those aren't deer, those are pigs. But you can see the sheds from a pretty long way off, so you got a, a really good chance to, and you can go and travel the edges of these burned air areas, travel the edges of them, and uh, watch up in the woods, you have a chance maybe to cover a lot, little bit more territory takes an awful lot of walking to find very many sheds. You can walk by pretty close to them and not see them. So it takes it takes a lot it takes a lot of walking, a lot of walking. Then I found a small shed. It looked like last year's shed the other day and I saw it laying out in the field that that we had burned. But this is all inside the inside the main high fence area, uh, the inside high fence area where the house is. We've got a double high fence area. This is inside, all inside of this, it's burned. And you look, we burned down through the woods. Now we can turn around and look on the other side and see areas that we have not burned. When you're looking over there, all I did is just swing the camera around, point it out in the woods. That's, a, that's areas that have not been burned over there. And where was, we was looking at through the woods a minute ago, you see this, why you don't really have a lot of burn in the woods and why it doesn't create a big blaze. There's not a whole lot out there to burn. Not really a whole lot out there to burn. Now once we get up here and get outside the inside fence, well even before we get there, you should be able to see a little bit of area where we're starting to get some green. I know it's kind of hard to see right now just because of the way the light is. And, uh, and holding this camera here. But you can see now we got some green tint. Now that area there was burned also. And you know, if you look out through there, you can see that the black has pretty much disappeared. You can't even hardly tell that it was burned, but it was. And now you can see a little bit of green tint coming to it. Not much, but a little bit of green tint. 
and uh, and that's that's exactly what's going to happen. It's going to get beautifully, beautifully green once we get a little sunshine on it, and we haven't burned up all our brush piles. You can see brush piles laying out there, but you can see that we're getting a little bit more green tint as we get to an area that's been burned off a little bit earlier than uh, than what what this is burned off. So here we are at the front, uh, the middle gate. Get that middle gate, let that middle gate open there. Yeah, I love automatic gates. I love automatic gates. Aren't they sweet? Aren't they sweet? This is about as good as you get. Now here's another big area that was burned that you can uh, see a little green popping out over there. You can see quite a bit of areas that you can just tell that it's just burned and it hadn't started growing back yet. But you can see quite a bit of green that's popped out over there on that. Uh, I'll show you some more green a little bit later in another field, but you can see that we're beginning to get, it's beginning to turn green. And we certainly hadn't greened up yet, but some of the, uh, that, that total field was burned. You can barely tell, barely tell that it was. You can still see black out there in areas, but you can see a little bit of tint of green. Now we'll see, we'll see some areas that's got a little bit more green. I know this doesn't look like much, but you'll be amazed. Now we will plant that field right there. That's one of the big giant food plots that we've got. We plant about 100 acres in Oakmoggy Oak, Oak River Buckmaker food plot. And uh, we've got two pallets of that seed coming, coming right now. And we'll be drilling that here pretty quickly once we get a good solid rain on it and we feel like these freezing temperatures are gone. Normally, the freeze is over by April 1, which is uh, <coughs> it's right around the corner, not very far away. But you can see that we haven't got much green back yet, but we're getting a little bit more green all the time. Let's drive over here by the lake, and I'll show you how low it is. As we get over here by the lake, we find some more areas that, uh, that we've burned off, and uh, some of it's getting a little bit more of a green tint to it. You can see still quite a bit of the black left. And you know, and those fields just turn total black is what they turn. So it's so great when you start seeing the green come up. You can see how, and so, you know, when you burn these things, there's a lot of them that doesn't burn. You see this right there, there's a lot of dead grass there that simply didn't burn. But there's a little bit of a green tint showing up to that, and that green tint will get a little bit better every single day. Take a look down here. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's kind of drive over the middle of this because this is uh, that we burned all of this right here. You can see, you can see it's, uh, it's got a little bit of green, not much. This middle part of this that we're driving on right now really didn't burn. But one of the things I wanted to show you, we'll drive by the edge of the lake down here and show you just how low Big Canyon Lake has become. I mean, it's just amazing how low this lake is. This little, this little pocket right here is totally dry that we're driving by. Totally dry. Look at that. We've, we've had our ranger boat, our tracker boats right up in there. You take a look at our boat dock over here that uh, we built. We built that boat dock, and will you take a look at how it looks right now? Totally dry. A little bit of mud down there in the bottom, and that's about it. But you can see that normally has about, when the lake's full, it's got about seven or eight or ten foot of water in it. So that's really horrible, terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Look over here. Again, we just burned this the other day. You can see that there's no green started back here at all got a nice burned out area right here. All you can see is black. Something in my eye. It's your finger, Jimmy. Oh, no, I mean besides my finger. Got a bugger. Grass or something got in my eye. But uh, you get down here, and we, we got to be kind of careful when you get down here on the lake. But you can see there's, this is not, that nothing green has come up here at all. Nothing, nothing, nothing. See that out there where we're looking at it at a little bit of a kind of, kind of hard to hold this up here 
rough and everything to drive this thing. We'll drive down there by the water. And you can see just how low that thing is. It looks like a bunch of hogs has been in here, out there rooting around in that. But the water level normally is where we are. Uh, the water level is normally up here where I'm driving right now. You can see how low the lake is. This lake is a 77 acre lake and it probably right now only has, I don't know, 50 or 60 acres of water. There's some Canada geese out there swimming around. We're driving on an area that we burned. Uh, this, is, uh, this is all normally in the water where we're driving right now, but we burned the area that we're actually driving on. You see a little bit down there. We'll drive up this way a little bit and you'll be able to see. We'll drive over here to our boat ramp, take a look at it. You'll see just how, how low this lake really is. It's, it's really, 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 really low. But one really, really nice, big, good rain. This is one of the dams here for our one of the dams here for our, our little crawfish brood pods, and then it's it's totally dry also. The crawfish don't really mind that too much because the crawfish will actually burrow down in the mud. And of course, these crawfish here probably most of them just simply most of them probably just simply went. You see that that little little pond right there is totally dry, absolutely totally dry. So it is a drought here in southern Oklahoma, big time. I mean, dangerous drought. Dangerous drought is so, is so dry. But you can see a little bit of green showing up in that. Now, we're going to go by some areas. And I'll just show you the difference. We're going to go by some areas here in a minute where the we've had the, it's, it's been a little longer since we burned. They, they've had, the, the grass had a little bit better chance. I'll drive down here and show you the boat ramp real quickly. The boat ramp that we cannot launch a boat in right now at all. Absolutely cannot. But here is our nice, beautiful boat ramp. <laughs> We're sitting at the top of the boat ramp. There it is right there. Isn't that a pretty boat ramp? The only problem with that boat ramp, there's no water at the end of it. There's a little washout area. That's where we've been loading the boats and it creates a hole down there. But, uh, Looks pretty bad. Looks pretty bad. Okay, we want to take a little quick look now at uh, at some areas that we burned off a little bit earlier. Look at this area over here. That's the pecan trees on the edge of the forest out there. But you can see how much greener it is. You can see how much more green we have out there than than we had in some of the other areas we looked at. Uh, and that will uh, within the next two weeks for sure. But even in just the next few days, there's going to be lots, lots, lots more green come up out there. And that'll turn into a beautiful green field on the edge of the woods and a tremendous amount of food out there for the animals. You can see we grow a lot of rocks up there. You see all those rocks? Rock picking up business around here is pretty good. <laughs> you wouldn't think there's that many rocks there because we burned all that out, but you can see even around all those rocks there's an awful lot of green an awful lot of green and we're getting ready to pull onto a field up here in a, in a second that's going to have even more green in it than what you look like on that one it's just a matter of letting it have the time and all the black turns into green it's an amazing amazing thing when you think about it you talk about a magic trick god knows how to do magic tricks God burns a lot of land off on his own by lightning strikes. So, you know, we're just kind of helping him out a little bit. But you take a look at that. That field there is beginning to get a lot of green in it. I don't know exactly how well that looks through, uh, through the iPhone camera, but, but that's quite a bit of green. That was all just total black, just an ugly, burned out field. But all of that burning out creates a lot of fertilizer. It helps, but you can see that there's an awful lot of green 
showing up we get up here it's even more because it's down in the bottom had just a little bit more moisture if we'd have had more moisture this would have been even a lot greener but now you can tell what that's going to look like these are some of the areas that we burned out first uh, some of the first burning that we did was on these fields right here and of course they've had a little bit longer chance for the grass to come back so but rain and sunshine and longer days you know spring when you hit that March 20 date of spring every year that is uh, that is a, a day when you have the same amount of darkness as you have the same amount of light so from here on throughout the summer all the way up until December the days are going to get longer I think it's December might be November I don't know but the days are going to get longer as you can see how these fields over here how much green they've got how, how nice they've got and they got really really nice and green they still got a lot of green to go I mean those things will be brilliant and beautiful green here in a couple more weeks but that's what happens when you burn fields we call it burning the ranch control burn uh, you, you turn them into ugly black looking fields and then God turns them into beautiful green fields lots of stuff for the animals lots of stuff for the deer to eat absolutely fantastic fantastic